recruited, but I think all of those guys um, tried to do what we asked them to do. Um, and I think anytime there's change, that's really hard to execute. So I'm, I'm pleased with all of the four teams that we've coached. Um, and I thought going into this year, I thought our roster was built in such a way that it probably was ideal. And I think uh, how these guys responded to the injuries and to the change within the roster was outstanding. Uh, I caught a little bit of your presser, and you were saying how it wasn't about the shots. Um, but if it wasn't about the missed shots, what you know? What's the primary thing on your end aside from Florida's pressure that uh, that led you guys falling short? No, I mean, um, I, I just think that anytime coach just say, oh, we just didn't make shots. Uh, I think that's a bailout. I think it's trying to take a charge and then doing an ole. Uh, you got to make shots. But there's always a reason why you don't make shots. And it's not just, well, there was a lid on the basket. There's not a lid on the basket. Somebody's guarding you. They had a plan for you. They're executing their scouting report. And I thought, I thought Florida was great. Uh, if we get beat, we'll say we get beat. And if we win, we'll be humble in how we handle it and try to prepare for the next game but when you get beat say you got beat and we got beat lingering uh, memories from from Jay and DJ of this class though when you think about them what kind of uh, portraits of them come to your mind about who they are as players and people uh, I really don't think about our guys as players uh, I always think about who they are as people I think about their path to Marquette I think about their growth and their maturity while here and uh, I think about the relationship that I'll have with them the rest of their life and uh, that I'll pray for them every day and I hope them nothing but the best Plus, Thank you. Plus, how hard was it to have them do the prayer, come in here and have DJ O and DJ do the prayer after the game? Or just That's what we do every year. Uh, somebody found out about it, and it's turned into a media spectacle. Uh, I've never talked after any game, the last game of the season. Uh, we do the same thing when it's their birthday. We do the same thing when somebody's leaving our program, whether it's a coach or a kid transferring. Um, we lay hands. We pray for them. Uh, we're thankful for what they gave us, and uh, we pray for their growth as future husbands, future fathers, and uh, that's it. I don't talk about the game. I don't talk about tomorrow. Uh, it's not a hooray session or a pity me session. Uh, this part of their life concluded as soon as the horn went off, and it's our responsibility to help them grow, to have a chance to be all that they want to be from here. Did the first half kind of throw you guys off a little bit rhythm-wise when Junior got in the foul trouble and Jay had to sit down? Yeah, I think I think um, as critical as each piece is to our roster, when we don't have the flexibility or the maneuverability to play the way that we want to play, it's hard for us to establish a rhythm. And, and that rhythm is not just offensively, that rhythm is defensively. And so uh, Jay only playing 12 minutes in the first half, I don't know that that's ever happened this year. Uh, junior having three fouls in the first half, I think that's happened once. Um, having four free throw makes, never getting to the bonus in the first half, uh, those are all rhythmatic, this is how we play things. We had six assists, six turnovers. Yet we're in the top 20 in the country in assist to turnover ratio. 68% of our baskets have been assisted. You know, all of those things are, are based on being in a groove. And we weren't in a groove. Um, and, and a lot of that does have to do with the fact that I didn't want to... Uh, I think it's dangerous to play Jay where he gets his third foul. Uh, particularly if Junior's already got his third. You know, we were betting, we were doubling down a little bit with Junior, um, but you can't do that with two key guys. And so, yeah, I think I think that's part of it. Plus, when things die down tomorrow, next week, whenever it may be, when you look back on this team, what do you think is going to be the one thing you're going to take more than anything else in the season? They love to work. Um, and and, and because of my personality and my nature, I want to be surrounded by beavers. I want to be around guys that love to wake up every day and go to work and do the same thing. And so I, I would say that that's how I feel now, and I don't I don't foresee that change in any. I think that um, you know your your biography is not your destiny; it's the decisions that you make, and you have to make a decision every day when you wake up. 
if you want to go to work. And I think everybody in our program, our assistants, uh, our trainers, our strength coach, they made a decision every day to go to work. And I think that that's, I salute and respect that. Do you think you had one more comeback in yet, the way you guys were coming back? I thought we, you know, I thought we were hanging in there and hanging in there. Um, it's, it's hard, it's hard to come back unless you have all your pieces, you know, and, and um, I thought some of the ATO plays were good plays. Um, we're playing without Junior, we're subbing offense for defense. That, that puts a lot of pressure on Vander, um, you know, trying to utilize Devontae in the right way. But yet, when we've got to get stops and the floor is going to be spread as much as it is uh, against a team like Florida, you need Jamil. And so um, I thought we were hanging in there. I thought when Todd dove on the floor and got that steal, uh, I thought that was a winner play. And uh, we used our last time out. I don't know what that was, about 540, I think, left in the game. And I, I told our guys, this is the this is the chance right here. This is the last hurrah. So I thought we we gave it our best. End of the first half and then start of the second half, two just bad stretches. I think they scored yeah. the last nine. And I think we were up 30 to 27. Yeah, up three. Um, the next quarter. Vander, Vander had two free throws, I think, is where we were at. I think that was That's it. Right, or maybe yeah. Vander right. made them to make it 30-27. Yeah. And uh, we were trying to do some zone pressure out of that free throw make. Never got into it. They had an open three. I thought we were tired. I thought we were tired in sequence. I thought we were tired in our ball screen coverage. I thought we took some tired shots. Jay's on the bench. Junior's on the bench by then. And we were just trying to hang in there. And then uh, Junior picked up his fourth foul out of a rotation on a closeout and I thought we had been I thought our energy was back uh, even though we hadn't made shots up until that point um, so yeah those were two bad stretches well, sorry if the answer is already, but can you just talk about how important Junior is to your team getting paint touches? Three minutes. I think what he does is he does a really good job of forcing help. You know, and unless unless you can force help, you can't force rotation. And so, so much of what Jay does, so much of what DJ does, to an extent, Vander when he's playing behind the behind defensively, is when we force help. And when you don't force help, here's the deal, and this is what I told our guys at halftime, you can't force help on the first side. It, there's only 16 teams left. There's not any bad players. There's not any bad coaches. You can't get help on the first side. It's got to get to the second and third side to force help. And when Junior's not playing, that doesn't mean, excuse me, that our other guys can't force help. But so much of their game is predicated on force help, pitch, inside out, paint touches. Um, and we, we had 24 paint touches at half out of 34 possessions. But of the 10 that we didn't have paint touches, we only made one basket. But hence, we only made four free throws. Hence, we only had six assists. Hence, we only we had six turnovers because we're trying to do it on the first side, and, and you can't you can't do that. Vander was very emotional after the game. How has he grown in the last year? Uh, he's he's the absolute best. He's the absolute best. If he didn't have such a good mom, I'd try to adopt him if it wasn't against NCAA rules. He cares. He cares. And sometimes his body language, uh, and if you don't know him, it comes across as he's being a jerk. No, he's not being a jerk. He's about as good a kid as there is. He cares so much. And his heart is on his sleeve. And um, I coach that away too. So we're kindred spirits in a lot of ways. And so I don't think my wife will, uh, I'm not Mormon, so I can't marry Rita. But uh, man, I love Vander, love him.